Guys, all the cars that you see in these videos are for sale on my website, www.woodsandbarclay.com. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the series on the 1984 Orient Red Wagon. And today we're just going to go through some very minor items to finalize and finish off this car. Now, as you saw in the test drive video, the wood trim had not been installed yet. So today we're going to install the wood trim. We're going to look at the sun visor mirror inserts. We're going to test out the air conditioner, make sure that's blowing cold and charged properly. And we're going to change the front license plate holder. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here we are in the car. Now we can see uh, the driver's side mirror fully intact with no breaks or tears anywhere in the, uh, in the uh, plastic bezel surround. However, if I look over here on the passenger side, we can see right there. See that little crack? And that is very common on uh, 123. So we're gonna remove this visor and replace this insert right here with a crack free piece. Now to remove these visors is very easy. There's just two screws. There's one here. Let's go ahead and take this one out. And there we can see the other one is right here on the back side. So I'm gonna put the camera down because this is gonna fall on my head when I take this one out. All right, once that's out, you can just unclip it right there and the visor pulls straight out of the car. Let's get this over onto the workbench. All right, we're over here on the workbench. You can see I have visor uh, inserts, uh, visor mirror inserts everywhere. This is such a common problem. I've also, anytime I see a good one pop up for sale, here we go. This is, uh, I buy these. Uh, and one of my parts suppliers also supplies me with them. Now, I can see here that I've already uh, replaced one here. Here's the, the damaged one right here. And I actually already had this one over here rebuilt. However, I don't like, see the mirror here? Uh, this is like a little metal, a metal piece, I think. It, it's not actually glass. See all the little specks? A little dots on there I don't like how that looks because we can see the one that came out of the car see how shiny that one is so what I'm gonna do is actually remove this insert right here and transfer it over to this good crack free mirror so let me go ahead and do that all right let's see if I can record this for you guys move move this uh, mirror out of the way here and the way Mercedes designed these is you can actually put a small screwdriver right down in here and you can pull out this mirror insert. And here we go, look at that. This one is very nice condition. There we go. So remember this, the frame here is what was damaged. So I will replace that at a later date for another car. But this one right here is the same exact piece. This is an original Mercedes piece. So what I want to do, we're going to open that up. We'll pull this one out of here. This is the one that had the little specks on it that I, I didn't like how that looked. There we go. We'll pull this one out. All right, there we go. Set that aside. And we can slide our good piece back in here. All right, now this one, see, it doesn't have uh, those little specks on the glass. It looks nicer. Let's go put this back in the car and just test it to make sure it works. And then Flip it in there. There we go. All right, that one works beautifully. So let's go ahead and get this screwed back in here. There we go. And put the one back here. All right, there we go. Now we have no cracking on the visor. Beautiful. 
Mission accomplished. All right, guys, I'm over here on the driver's side, and although this one is not cracked, um, what has happened on this one is some of the glue behind here, see how that's a little loose in there? That's also a common thing that you see. So <clears throat> I'm going to take this one out, reapply some of the glue behind it to make sure that's firmly attached. All right, now that we're on the workbench, let me show you what I was talking about. Uh, so see these inserts, they're just glued in there. See, see Mercedes puts, they put like little dabs of that orangish, it's like an orangish yellow glue. Well, sometimes with age, that just, the glue stops holding. And I can see it's fully attached all around here, no problem. But right there, see that? See how the glue is let loose there? So let me show you. This is very common. As I said, look at all the pieces I have up here. You can see here's one that's been out of a car. See where the they put the glue on the back sides of them? That's what holds that in there. But let me show you um, how to repair that. All right, hopefully that's a good angle for you guys. So right here, this is uh, JB Weld. It's quick setting epoxy. It's just a two-part epoxy. All right, we're just going to squirt a little bit out of here. There we go. That's all we need. Now this does, uh, it says quick setting. It does take a few hours to cure. Um, it says it sets in five minutes, but really it just gets kind of tacky after five minutes. So we're going to mix this up. And you want to have a rag nearby just in case you get it on the, the vinyl or the MB Techs. Uh, don't use super glue on this uh, or Gorilla Glue. You can use that on a lot of interior parts. Um, but if you apply it to these vi uh, visors, what happens with the Gorilla Glue or the super glue, that stuff emits like a gas as it cures. And it'll cause like white streaking. It'll cause whiteness to appear on the vinyl. I don't know. It reacts with super glue very strangely. Uh, but this stuff works great. Now, you'll see I'll probably drip it some areas. But I'll wipe that off. So you want to get some on here. And then you actually want to go right along the side right there. Kind of tuck it down in there. And we're going to do it right here along the front. Okay, there we go. Let's put a little more over here on the side. And this stuff is way more forgiving than super glue. All right, let's get it down in there. Perfect. All right. Push it right down in there. Okay, now what we would want to do, we want to push that down in there. I'm going to wipe off the excess. And then we want to put a little weight on here so it can cure. So let me show you that. I'm just going to wipe off our excess. There we go. Kind of want to get right up under the edge there to get that excess glue off of there. There we go. Okay, now we need a little bit of weight. There we go. We want to apply a little weight right there. So we put a microfiber over it. And then these are actually, I think they're like 10 pound weights from my, uh, from my press. And you lightly put them on there. There you go. Now we leave it there so it can cure. And we probably want to leave it there. We'll just let it sit like that for maybe an hour or so. And I'll leave my epoxy right here so I can come back and see how dry it is. So we'll come back in about an hour. Okay, guys, before um, we go check out the visor and install the wood trim, I'm just checking out uh, the air conditioner system. Now, I did top off the 134. I added a uh, one more can of refrigerant. And this AC, I thought it was blowing cold yesterday, but today, okay, that's crazy. 
I mean, it's not super hot outside, but that is reading 39 degrees. Uh, wow, that that's incredible. Now, it's not going to be probably not that cold once it's like 90 degrees outside. But yeah, that is absolutely incredible. That is freezing cold. So this AC, I'm going to go drive it around, get the car up to temp and just make sure that is solid. But, you know, we have a, uh, there's a new AC compressor. Uh, that's a brand new Bear compressor that the previous owners installed. And we also have a, there is a brand new receiver dryer down there. So, I guess they properly had it serviced because it is working outstanding. So, let's go ahead and move back to our visor. Okay. Now we're just getting into some really small detailed things as I'm just finishing up going through the rest of the vehicle. And I see this front license plate. That's the original. And that one is kind of gunky looking. That looks like it's been on the front of the car right by the road for 40 years. So we have this over here. Boom. That is a brand new Mercedes Benz front license plate holder. So let's go ahead and put that on the car. All right, in order to get this loose, there's like some 11 millimeter uh, nuts under here. I mean, bolts under here, but there's also a 13 millimeter nut right on the back side. Let's see, got to kind of feel for it. Okay, there we go. Let's see if we can get this guy out of here. There we go. Okay. Okay, cleaned up the chrome bumper really good behind there. Now, let's get this other nut and washer attached behind here <laughs> this is this is pretty tricky it's easier to do with the bumper off the car <laughs> okay now i just need to tighten it back down and there we go that looks much better there's the old front license plate holder and there's our brand new one looks much better All right, we're back over here uh, to our visor mirror insert, and we can see that epoxy has gotten pretty hard. It's it's gummed up uh, pretty pretty solid there. Still a little gummy, but we can go ahead and remove our weights now. <clears throat> Boom! Look at that. So. You remember how this corner here was peeling up? Now that is securely attached back in there. And we have no residue out here and it looks very, very nice. So let's go ahead and get this back in the car. All right, let's check this out. Boom. And it's now perfectly sealed around there. It's not trying to come out. Beautiful, two perfectly working sun visors. There we go, guys. We have two perfectly working sun visors and the frames are not cracked or coming out now. That's a very, very common issue. I see it on almost every single 123 that comes in the shop. So let's go ahead, shut these visors and go to the install installation of the wood trim. Okay, here is the day I have been waiting for. Just got the box back from Madeira Concepts. Um, oh, there's all the wood individually wrapped. So I got to unwrap all this and get it on the table, and then I'll show it to you guys. All right, we have all the wood unwrapped, and guys, Madeira does such a fantastic job. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. It's perfect. 
See all the Zebrano stripes are just bright. The color, what's important is they get the tint correct because the wood is actually not stained. It's the polyester resin coating that's tinted. If you peel this off, the wood is a very light color underneath. And most people, not most, all of the companies I've seen, they get the wood color wrong or the, the tint of the resin wrong. That looks fantastic. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll start with this piece. Let's go ahead and pop in our switches. And the switches just have little clips on the back of them that just clip right into place. Man, that looks good. All right, let's get our shifter boot back on. And guys, this literally just pulls around. It's just a piece of rubber that clips over the edges. Look at that. That's as good as it gets, you guys. Brand new, just like Mercedes would have had it. And let's reassemble our glove box. I'm sorry, not our glove box. Let's reassemble our ashtray. And it's just going to clip on here like that. For those of you guys that work in the shop, you probably have a favorite screwdriver. This is my favorite screwdriver. It's an old school wooden handle. I don't know. That might have been my granddad's. It's just an awesome screwdriver. Beautiful. All right. Next thing we want to do is the glove box door. Now, if you remember, this lock goes in a specific way. And when I took it out, I marked it. I put white marks there and white marks there. If you put it upside down, it doesn't line up with these little... See how the lock... Here we go. See how those like half moon cutouts there line up with the with the back of the lock assembly? See how it's like rounded? You got to make sure you put it in there correctly. We want to put this in correctly. Now this you can put in. I don't think you can put it in backwards. See, uh, let me just make sure I'm right about that. Okay, my bad. You can, but you want to make sure. It's lined up with the wood grain from this piece, which goes on the center of the dash. Okay, so it's lined up that way. And then you want to make sure it lines up with this grain. Yeah, see the grain is lined up correctly here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, the grain, I'm just making sure all these grains are lined up correctly. So that's the correct way for that to install. Let me make sure I don't have the glove box upside down. Okay, yeah, it opens like that and attaches there at the bottom. Okay, so the way you attach this, we're gonna flip it over and these little metal prongs stick through on the back. So you wanna hold the wood firm and then we wanna twist these prongs. There we go. Now we'll do it over on this side. Now we'll do the ones in the middle. There we go. Nice. All right, now I'm looking at my marks here. 
and my marks here. So the lock presses in this way. There we go. Perfect. All right. So that is assembled. Now we can go into the car. And first I'll start with getting all the uh, upper center console. You know, you have your sun, not sunroof, I'm sorry, like your dome light, your wiper switches, uh, your rear heater, um, rear glass heater. We're gonna put all those switches through here and uh, install this first. Okay, I'm installing these first because this is probably the most tedious part. Um, see, I've got all my switches plugged in here, so we're gonna go ahead and pull these out. Now, behind them, see this little wire? That's a fiber optic. And that little fiber optic, I'm pull it out of here. There we go. That little fiber optic is where the light shines through to illuminate this. So, we're gonna go ahead, unplug these. Now, to install this is kind of tricky. What you want to do is get your switches up through here, or your, your connectors. To make it a little easier, I'm going to pop out the climate control panel here. Okay, now I can reach behind there. That'll be a little easier to do it that way. Seems like every time I do this, it's always different. All right, let's pop this one in here. All right, now we got to get these little clips over the bottom. All right. There we go. Got it. Now we can push our switches in. Guys, that's the hardest part about the wood, is getting getting that panel back in. Sometimes it just like works out and everything lines up, and other times it's just tougher. All right, beautiful. All right, now let's uh, let's go ahead and do the climate control panel. All right, now I'm just going to reattach our climate control panel. And there's just some screws that go right through here. That one started there. Now let's push the radio back in here. All right, now this panel, it just clips on. There's like little dowel pins in the back and it just pushes right on here. All right, now we wanna put in uh, our center wood section here. So let me go get that. All right, when we're putting in our center wood section here, uh, first I wanna make sure that I hook up the fader switch correctly so it fades the right direction so I think it's going to go this way we're going to just plug it in and then test it and see all right let me see if that's the right right direction we'll put the key in turn the radio on and try the fader okay good that's the right direction. All right, now what we wanna do is hook up all of these other switches. All right, and we have one more over here, the passenger switch. Okay, now guys, what's important when we install this, and I'll push that back down in there, there's a peg on the back I don't know if you guys can see it, 
but you want to make sure that peg lines up with the hole. Uh, back here, there's a hole that peg goes through. And that's what holds down uh, the back piece of the, of the wood. There we go. We got it in there. boot fixed around here. All right. Perfect. Okay. Now we want to install um, our ashtray section right here. And this kind of holds down the front of the center wood piece here and kind of clips over the front of the radio. And there's a 12 volt power back here. And before I do that, I'm going to make sure my switches work because I have to take that back out if I have to take this apart. So let me just test my switches real quick. All right, good. All my switches work. Because I've, I've put all this together before and then realized one of my switches didn't work. I had to take it all back apart. All right, so this, I'm going to plug this in back here. There we go. That's our power switch. And now we line up the holes here and put our screws back in there. All right, good. Now let's go get our ashtray. All right, so the ashtray has a little like tang right here, a little clip. And these go right over the bottom like that and you push your clip in there we go all right good got that in there ashtray works great all right. okay so for the glove box we want to First, take off our little nuts here and here. I'll just set those over here. And then we had our screws in here that go through the plastic door. We're going to take these out. All right, so we want our lock mechanism here to line up right there because that's what unlocks the door. So let's pull this down. Okay, there we go. Now we'll lower our door down. All right, now I'm going to put one screw. Okay, our lock is in the right place. Good. Now I'm going to put one screw right here just so that'll hold the door in place. And our glove box nut goes right here. Now remember, this is the nut where you need the uh, special special tool. See how the tip is like shaved like that? Uh, this is actually from Kent out at Mercedes Source. I think I ordered this thing years ago. Probably could make it yourself pretty easy. All right, let's screw that in there. Now we're going to temporarily tighten those down. We don't know if we have it right in the exact right place yet. All right, let's see how that operates. Okay, I want to move it up. Actually, yeah, that's pretty good. I think I want to move it up a little bit, though, to close that gap a little. And this is where you can spend literally <laughs> an hour trying to get this thing adjusted right. There we go, like right there. Let's try that. Oh man, that is perfect. All right, 
You can never get them exactly perfect, guys, but I try to get that gap as perfect as I can. And, uh, you know, just with age and, and how difficult it is to get these little things together, that is perfect. So I am not going to mess with it anymore. Um, I'm just going to tighten them down here. Oh, that even shuts nice. That's awesome. Now let me put our light back in here. I had the light out uh, because the glove box door wasn't there, so the glove box light stayed on. So now we'll put that light back in. And let's just make sure it works. Good. And we'll make sure it turns off when we shut the glove box. Yeah, good. Okay, cool. It just went off. Comes on. Goes off. All right, now we need to start assembly of the surrounding wood pieces. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay guys, this is how I reapply these wood pieces. Um, I use five minute quick setting epoxy and to initially hold it, I'll do like two or three dab, just one little dab of Gorilla uh, gel based super glue. Now you don't wanna use this all over it because this will like, What's, I don't know what the right word is. It'll like off gas. And if you, when you come out the next day, it'll have like white residue around, um, around the wood piece. There'll be like white residue. So you don't want to use a lot of this. You just want to use a dab of it. But the main thing you want to use is this stuff. I'm just going to mix up a little bit. It doesn't take much. All right, we'll mix up just a little bit of epoxy. And you also want to have a rag handy when you're doing this. That way you can quickly wipe away any if it squirts out the sides. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, to initially hold it in place, I'm going to put a dab of super glue right there right there and right there that's about all you want guys so that'll hold it in place like you know hold it in place while this dries and then you just want to rub kind of rub in a bead of epoxy or not a bead but like a little film of epoxy right in the center. Now you don't want to get too close to the edges because it'll squirt out. Just right in the middle. We're going to do a little right over here and a little right over here. And this, that's it guys. You don't need to go crazy with this stuff. All it takes is just a little. This stuff is very strong. Let me grab a rag here. All right, let's go install this piece. Here you can see, I did a little dot of super glue there, there, and there. And then I'll hold it for like 60 seconds while that sets. And then the super glue will hold it in place while the epoxy dries. Right there. Okay, I'm going to check your positioning. I've got it positioned perfect. See, you, you want to get the grains to almost line up perfectly right here. See how we have the grains very, very close together? All right. Now you hold it in place where the super glue was for like 60 seconds. <laughs> okay, it's about a minute later. I just removed my hands. And let me wipe that dirt off of there. There we go. Now, that is held in place, and the epoxy is now drying. And see how I got the wood grains to line up with each other? That's how you want to do it. So, that piece is going to dry. Let's go ahead and move to the center piece. And it's the same process, guys. I'll just show you when I'm done. 
Well, there you have it. We are done with the wood trim. And it came out absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Guys, that's as good as it gets. And let's see if I can show you the piece over here on the uh, driver's side. There we go. Very nice. Zoom across it one more time because this uh, means we are officially done with the car. That was the last thing we had to do. Absolutely beautiful. You can see where we got all the wood grains to line up perfectly from piece to piece. Guys, it just came out absolutely incredible. Well, that concludes the series on the 84 Orient Red Wagon. That was the final thing I had to do on the car. I am officially done. Guys, it's been months. I put a ton of hard work into this car. And the next video will be the official walk around video. So stay tuned. That'll be coming out soon. Take care.